Okay, hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, I have now shared my screen, and I'm hoping everybody can see it. Uh, what I'm going to ask you to do, if you will, is I'm going to type in a little chat here. And if you're on your computer, just respond. I'm just going to say hi to everybody. And if you're on your computer, say hi back. That'd be great. Let's see who's on the call here. We have several other people still logging on. Appreciate that. Hey, Richard. Thanks for saying hi. Appreciate that. Okay, we'll give some people a, another minute or two. Get rolling. I hear beeps. That must mean people are signing on. We'll give people another minute or two. What time is it here? It's 5.59 Mountain Standard Time, so another minute. I see Jeff, Keiko, Pat, Richard, Samantha, and then a couple other folks who are uh, getting on and haven't signed in yet, so we're waiting for their names to pop up. Robin, Mark, thanks everybody for signing on today. And you can use the chat function. So if you have a question or something, um, you know, feel free. I, I'm uh, going to try. I can type with one hand and holding the phone in the other. <laughs> but I'll try to respond to your questions. I'll also respond by voice, obviously. Um, I'm going to keep everybody muted, though. I think it's easier that way. Keep everybody muted and um, go by go with the chat as a way to. Uh, discuss any questions, which we'll do at the end. We'll open up some Q&A at the end. Can you guys see my screen? Let me know if you can see my screen by sending me a chat message or just respond to everybody and say, yep, you can see it. All right, Robin, thanks. Appreciate that. Good stuff. Okay. All right. Well, let's get started. Uh, we don't want, I don't want to take up too much of your time tonight. I am going to record this, so if anybody's interested, they can go back and look at it again. It's going to be short. We're going to go over the uh, Super 6 program. This is the second of our Spinnerable Cycling webinar series, um, and I'm pretty excited about this whole series concept, presenting it on webinar or by webinar and uh, going over some different topics related to indoor cycling and training and triathlon and maybe some other topics as well as we get into it. But today we're going to talk about the January Super 6 program. So we're starting the Super 6 in a few days and the concept here is to talk about the details for anybody who wants some more depth, you know, in terms of what my thinking is when developing these programs. So let's get into that and talk a little bit about that. So thank you for joining us. Today you'll learn about the January training block of the Super 6. We're going to go over the history and the overview of the program, um, some of the details of the program, and of course we'll have a little bit of Q&A at the very end. Let's dive right into it. So what is the Super 6, you ask? Well, the Super 6 is a cycling intensive training program originally designed for the six months of the non-competition, non-competitive season for the purpose of boosting one's performance in preparation for the season. So the idea was spawned, um, obviously the winter months are really critical for any athlete, any endurance athlete interested in taking their performance to the next level. And having cycling intensive programming, I think is really beneficial, not only for cyclists, but even for triathletes. I found that when a triathlete really focuses on a, one sport uh, for a, give, a block of time, that their other sports really don't take a, a downward turn. They maintain for the most part, but then their sport of focus, they actually take a step up. So it's a great way to break through plateaus and different barriers. Um, and in the world of sport of triathlon, as we all know, a large percentage of your time and, and time and effort is put into the bike because over 50% of the race itself is spent on the bike. So you need to build that um, modality. And then, of course, um, I'm someone who believes that cycling, having really strong cycling legs, absolutely benefits the run. So every cyclist or every triathlete, rather, needs to really work on that 
cycling piece in order to run well off the bike. Um, and then, of course, for the cyclist, having that really intensive cycling focus in winter months is a great way to maintain uh, motivation, maintain momentum, and build fitness and form in a time of year where a lot of people aren't. They're letting things slack, and then they get into the season, and they're not as strong on the bike. But you need to make incremental gains in your fitness year-round with little setbacks. You know, I think there should be a planned downtime each year, a little bit of a recovery period where you do take a step back. Um, but this is not the time to do it. We're in January. It's time to start really building. So the Super 6 program was designed to help people um, uh, have that focus in their training program to provide a structured, periodized program for athletes leveraging the Spinnervals cycling series. And that's what this program is all about. So six months of focus. I think this is our fourth or fifth year for doing it. Um, gosh, I'm forgetting now, fourth or fifth? But anyway, it's um, been several years. And the, the really cool thing is we've had, I, I, gosh, thousands of people participate in the program. And I can say that because I see everyone who uh, downloads the program to their Training Peaks account. So I can actually look at the data. And it's really inspiring to see how many people do this program. So what are the intentions of the program? I sort of alluded to this, but um, the intentions of the January block of the Super 6, number one, training zone validation. We are going to perform again the functional threshold power test as we do uh, frequently throughout the program. And this is, of course, to set your zones, but also to monitor your movement. You know, why do anything without measuring performance gains. If you're going to commit a lot of time and effort, you need to measure. So training zone validation is really important. So we start off the program, as you'll see, with a uh, functional threshold power test. And, you know, I look down this list of, of um, some of the folks on the call. I know that a lot of you have done this test many times. You're very familiar with it, and you know it's very painful. But that's okay, because it's good for you as well, as many things are that are painful, right? Um, the other thing we're going to be doing is working on your aerobic base and foundation, and that will be done um, with a lot of aerobic base training each week in the program. It's always important. You know, we're always working on aerobic foundation as endurance athletes, and this time of year is no exception. So we'll be doing that. In addition, we'll be working on our technique development, uh, skill set development, uh, the ability to be efficient and produce power using as little energy as possible. That's really a key to success in cycling, especially long distance cycling. Um, so the more efficient we are on the bike biomechanically, the the more the stronger we'll be on the bike. You're leveraging less energy and as you all know, especially those of you who race, um, that's usually a winning combination. The other intention is to be consistent. I mean this program is not about doing one workout a week, as you will find out. This program is about very consistent, diligent training, getting on that bike several days a week, putting in the work, no excuses, and being consistent with the program. And of course, that goes into dedication to the plan. I know, again, several of you are dedicated to this plan because you've been doing it for quite a while. But um, if you are new to this programming, dedication is key. You, you need to stick with it. It's not a quick fix. You know, you don't just do a training program like this for a month and say, okay, I'm done. You really don't. It's a, it's a big commitment. And ideally, you will commit to a program year-round that uh, leverages a scientific approach to training, and it will, it, it, that will get you stronger. There's just no doubt about it, and there's plenty of evidence to support that statement. Accountability for carrying through. Um, that's an intention that we have with this program, accountability. Who do you have accountability to? Well, hopefully to yourself. You know, I think we're all pretty serious athletes, and when we tell ourselves we're going to do something, we stick to it. Obviously, there's some things that can derail that um, intention, family obligations, work obligations, and obviously that's okay. But for the most part, you need to be accountable to yourself, but also to others. And some of you have coaches, which is great. What a great tool that is to leverage a coach. Um, others of you are really leveraging the Spinnervals member Facebook group um, led by Alan. I mean, that's a great way to post your workouts and 
you know, get on there and, and just be accountable to the group. And I see so much support in that group. So I think that's a, a great tool for everybody to use. And I'd like to get more and more people involved in using that form of accountability. So getting started, I know several of you have already up downloaded the program to your Trading PC account because I've seen your name on the list. So that's great. But um, here's the link if you're still interested in doing that. And certainly you can find it online and on the website and a lot of other places. But basically, you just go to the Training Peaks, this, um, this page on Training Peaks. It's kind of, kind of a neat tool that they're leveraging now or they're putting out for us now. And uh, you get on there and you click on the Super 6 January 2016. You hit Buy, and of course, the program's free, and it automatically downloads to your Training Peaks account. So easy peasy. So let's d dive in to the training plan and what that looks like. Um, I'm going to actually go over each day and just talk about the workout briefly and then go on um, and then give you a little bit of an overview of what we're, we're focusing on here. Okay, so let's start off with uh, Saturday. Yeah, and interestingly, the way the new Training Peaks software is set up, um, it doesn't have the exact date, but you kind of kind of get the idea of where it falls looking at my screenshot here. Um, so Saturday we're doing some aero baseboard, getting everybody kicked off. Um, in a way that's somewhat easy because hopefully you guys are doing a Hardcore 100 coming up on New Year's Day. That's on the, the December Challenge program, and I hope you guys are doing that. So get ready, but we're going to start into the program a little bit easier. Um, so then Sunday will be, of course, um, an active recovery day. Shake it out. You know, If you don't have that video, no big deal. Just get on the trainer, spin it out for 30 minutes, and you're good to go. Um, the other thing I might suggest you do is to... Uh, Hit the elliptical. I, I love the elliptical machine. I think it's such a great overall body workout. You can do it high intensity or you can do it low intensity, but what a great way to uh, have a little bit of active recovery and training in your program. So then we'll, let's go into week two. There you see rest day. And typically I do like to do Mondays as a rest day. Um, I do that because if you start the week off, it's a great day to kind of recover from a long weekend of training. And many of us have started our work week on Monday as well. So it might be a good day to just focus on that. But obviously, you can shift your workouts. And if you have to, you can shift that rest day to another day. So we do have two strength workouts each week, typically situated on Tuesday and again on Fridays. Um, I always use Strendorance as my go-to word for strength training. You can use the video that we do have in our library, which is a 12-week progression. And you can pick up wherever you are in that progression, or some people will choose to do their own strength work, and that's fine. The key, of course, is to do something in rel related to resistance training. I think that's really important for every endurance athlete. So um, then we have our threshold test. So one piece of advice I will have is to do your threshold test before you do your strength work so you're rested and fresh for that test to get a really valid result. Then on um, Wednesday, we're actually going to do a little bit of interval work. I, do, I wouldn't say it's a super hard, intense workout session, but it's in our fitness series. It's been our old fitness 4.0, Lean and Mean, which is a really popular workout in the fitness series. And I usually don't include this in the Super 6, but uh, I'm going to add some of these new workouts to the program. Um, and then on Thursday, we're going into a wild card day. And wild card days are situated so that you have a choice, and you can be intuitive leverage your power of self-awareness and see where you are in the program. And if you feel tired, you take a day off. And if you feel like you want to do something, you do some exercise. But don't get on the bike. You know, let, stay off the bike on these days that we have wild card days set up and do something um, different. Again, elliptical, brisk walking on the treadmill. I also like incline walking on the treadmill. Set that at treadmill at 10% grade at around 3.7 to 4.2 miles per hour and power walk it. What a great workout that is, and it doesn't beat you up at all. So really good session. Uh, Friday, then we get into Strength Dorrance again, and then the Spinnerville 6.0, the Zoot Challenge, one of the classics. Gosh, I, I don't even remember when we shot that workout, probably in 2000 or uh, 99. But um, older workout, but a really strong training session. Again, some interval work, um, not super intensity, but pretty intense. Um, to give you a little bit of higher end. And then we go into aerobic base, hour and a half or so of aerobic base work on Saturday, followed by another Shake It Out workout. So you look at that, we have one, two, 
three, four, five days on the bike uh, in that first block. So then we move on to week three, and here we have our rest day on Monday. Um, and once again, Strendorance and then Spinner Wolves 18.0, one of our aero-based builder workouts. Then on Wednesday, you go into the uphill grind. What a popular session that has been. Um, it's, you know, in terms of units sold, I think that's one of our highest sellers, interestingly, over the years with the Spinner Wolf series. And um, just a popular workout. An all-female cast of athletes. I think we shot that in 2000. Um, but just a really good interval session, kind of focused on the hill climbing piece. And then a wild card day on Thursday again to do what you'd like, maybe take a day of rest. And then uh, on Friday, Suffer Rama, another very popular workout in the classics, shot back in 1998, um, as well as your Strendorance workout. Saturday, we do Spinner Rolls 47, which is an aero base builder type session, uh, one of our newer workouts, but a really good one. I love the production quality of that and where we shot it. And then in, uh, on Sunday, is shake it out once again. So let's keep moving on. Week number four, rest day. Then we go into Spinnerville's 28.0, another aero base builder workout. I think that's one we shot in New Jersey. It's a good session. We shot that at a car dealership. <laughs> and then um, we have our Strendorance workout. Next day, we do another Sufferorama. rama So aero base intervals. Okay, you see a little bit of a pattern developing. Rest day. Um, and that's absolute rest, not wild card, but just take a nice, easy day, rest. And then um, you're looking at uh, Friday, you're looking at 38, which is a technique and power session. So getting into that technique piece, all these workouts, as you guys know, have some element of technique in them. Um, but this one is really strong in that area. And then on Saturday, we have our 30.0 Muscular Endurance Plus, which we videotaped, I think, in Chicago several years ago. And that's a really good two and a half hour or so session. And you're building your aerobic endurance. You see a little bit of volume building on the weekends. And then on Sunday, you have recovery and technique, one of our first really specific workouts that focused on um, that skill set development piece. And moving on, week five, we have our rest day, and then we have our strendurance, um, and then 17.0, another one in the aero base builder series. And then spinner rolls with Iron Girl. Some of you may have not have done that or seen it, but we videotaped this one in Las Vegas at Lowe's Resort. And that was a really good workout. I think you will enjoy it. It's an interval session. So you're going to do some higher end work, but just uh, give you some variety. I think you'll enjoy the backdrop and the scenery. And then we have a wild card day on Thursday. Again, getting into our technique and power workout on Friday with another strength training session. And then, of course, I have to put in our new workout, this 50.0 Tougher Love, which is just a really strong endurance, aerobic endurance building session. And I know you guys love the, what, what, what is it, 50 by 50 towards the end. Um, gotten a lot of interesting feedback on that set. But I tell you what, if you, uh, if you, uh, <laughs> Kiko just said, 38 was shot overlooking Baltimore, not Chicago. Really? Are you sure about that? All right. Well, I'll need to look at that. Um, and then Alan just said, we just love the 50 by 50. Yeah, that's a tough set. I mean, mental, for developing mental toughness, I think that's a really strong opportunity right there. Um, you know, just the mental toughness piece. So, Kiko, I've got so I'm thinking here. 38 shot overlooking Baltimore. Um, at the Inner Harbor, is that what you're thinking? Or at the Maryland Science Center? I'm trying to think of what, what, what uh, because 38, 38, that might have been in, in Annapolis. Maybe that's what you're referring to, Annapolis, Maryland. Okay. <laughs> all right, thanks for all the feedback there. Um, and somebody said we did 51 reps. Really? Are you sure about that, Nancy? Or Robin? Uh, check on that. Sorry, if that happened, I'm sorry. I, I lose my my train of thought sometimes in those workouts. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, so keys to success. You know, this block, as with any block, um, okay, Robin, I see. We almost did 51. And, uh, yeah, Nancy, that's why. She's called the floor director, and that's what her job is, to keep me on track. And she does a pretty good job of it most of the time. Um, but let's talk about our keys to success here. 
um, first of all, is prioritize your training. You know, if you really want to take a step up with your training and take it to the next level with your fitness, you have to prioritize your training being one of the first things you do in the day. You know, it's a very important thing that you do every day. It's almost like brushing your teeth. Um, you know, get up, you brush your teeth, bingo, you just do it. Well, that hour that you carve out for your training is something you just do. And if it's the first thing in the morning get it before getting the kids up from school, you do it. So prioritize. Plan, meaning make it an important part of your daily plan. Um, once again, make it and just as if it's um, like any other important thing you do on a daily basis, training should be on that list. Hit 90%, meaning hit 90% of your workouts. The expectation is that there's going to be a 10% noncompliance rate. Um, that's the corporate guy in me saying noncompliance. But um, it's true even with training, especially when we're working with uh, adult athletes who are juggling so many things in addition to their training, 90% compliance with workouts is really strong. So if you can do that, I'm really proud of you. You're going to get the results you need to get out of it. Um, the other piece, another key to success is to post and share. Uh, I find we across the board that the more engaged people are in sharing workouts and having a social support system, you know, through social media, Facebook, Training Peaks, whatever it might be, the more likely they are to really stick to their training program. So, you know, think about that for a second and see if you're one of those folks. I know a lot of you on this call are, and that's great. Measure and record because what gets measured matters. So, you know, I know you, a lot of you guys are using training peaks, which is good. You can go back and you can measure your performance. And a lot of you are into um, really going deep into the measuring piece, um, which is absolutely fine as well. But make sure you're at least tracking your functional threshold power data so that you can compare uh, one result after another. I know, Keiko, I've seen you uh, post your charts and reports and tables to Facebook and you compare prior results to current results. And you know, I think that's a great way to really track your performance and how you're improving over time. So nice job. And then finally, I say celebrate because um, <laughs> It goes bow, bowing right now. Um, celebrate meaning, you know, when you have a good workout, when you have a good week of training, and you hit all your training sessions, celebrate. I don't know what that means to you. Maybe it's, you know, having a glass of wine. Maybe it's having a, you know, nice chocolate bar. I don't know, but um, whatever it is, plan on celebrating your little victories when you really do a nice job. And for Alan, that's beer, and for me too, Alan. So that's cool. I like IPA and chocolate pizza. So um, that's those are keys to success. And I think you guys really you leverage those keys in your own programs, um, but certainly it will help you going forward. So I just want to touch base on some other upcoming cool stuff that we're doing. This is all related to spinnervals because in one way, shape, or form, the spinnervals is involved. And one is the indoor triathlon coming up on January 3rd at Lifetime Fitness. Lifetime Fitness is a national health club company. We have over 120 clubs nationwide, and we're partnering with Ironman to create a um, indoor tri train indoor tri race um, event on January 3rd. It starts at 8 a.m. So if you're near a Lifetime, sign up. It's 30 bucks. You do a 10-minute swim, a 30-minute bike, and a 20-minute run. And you just basically get a great hour workout, and you call yourself a triathlete at the end. It's just a great way to kick off the new year with the triathlon. I'm going to go to the one in Tempe, Arizona, um, and my daughter is going to do that one. And we're looking forward to it. Uh, we have thousands of athletes that go through this with us each year. So IndoorTri.com, check that out. And the other thing I want to mention is uh, our camps, our training camps are coming up in only a few months. I can't believe it. It seems like it comes around so quickly. But we have Tucson coming up, and that's going to be like our 15th year doing the Tucson camp. I love it. Um, as some of you know, I live in Tucson now and have for many years, and just it's a great area to train, great area to be, especially in late March when there's snow on the ground wherever you are. It's uh, sunny and 75 degrees in Tucson, so great weather for training. Um, and this year we're, we're at a really cool venue, a little different venue than in prior years, but I'm really looking forward to it. So that's a five-day camp. Come on out for that one. Tri-camp, 
and cycling. And then Las Vegas is a lifetime camp, and that one is just spectacular. It's a three-day program just north of Vegas in the Strip in Summerlin, and it's uh, hosted at a bike shop where we actually shot a couple of our videos, Las Vegas Cyclery. And um, we actually have the Red Rock Loop virtual ride, if anybody's interested in that. And you can actually ride the Red Rock Loop with us, see what that's about. Just a stunning ride. And there's this awesome four-mile climb midway through. Um, and we do that ride a couple times during the camp. Um, but that's a really good camp, big camp. We'll get like 80 to 100 people at that one. Just tons of fun. So that's uh, Las Vegas. And then, of course, Lake Placid, another one of my absolute favorite camps coming up in June. This will be like our 16th year for that. And that is, uh, and we're going to coincide with the um, Lake Placid Half Marathon this year, which your entry into the race is covered for the marathon as well, or into the camp is covered to run the marathon. Um, so look at that one as your summer training camp, or you can choose to go to Boulder, Colorado for our camp in Boulder. So lots of opportunities if you're interested in a tri and or cycling training camp for 2016. All right, so that's all I've got today. Just quick and quick explanation of the Super 6 block for January. Again, the block is focused on aerobic development as well as technique. We do have some interval work in there because we do follow that concept of nonlinear periodization. So we work on all energy systems year-round, but we shift our focus throughout the year depending on what kind of events we're getting ready for and what time of year it is. But be consistent. Um, be accountable with the group, posting off into um, the uh, Facebook page, and you're going to do fantastic. All right, so I'm going to take some questions here, and I see that we have one from Mark. Let's see. Um, let me do the spring one. I'm going to get the Mark on. We'll follow a traditional periodization builder. Or, um, so that's a good question, Mark. It, neither, neither, neither. Um, I don't think it, it won't follow really a traditional periodization plan nor of a reverse periodization plan where I think what you're referring to is where you you go with more intensity at the front end and then you build more volume and base towards the end. Um, it's going to be more mixed where everything is mixed in with regard to working on different energy systems. So in a week you'll do aerobic base work but you also do a little bit of interval work and you're seeing more and more coaches go to this nonlinear approach to periodization. So there's still a structure to the way your training program is set up throughout the year, but it's just we're always we're always striving for continuous improvement. Um, whereas in the past, in the more traditional periodized model, you would actually have you know two or three months of just focused base work and nothing else, um, and that's fine. You can try that, but it's it seems to be a more effective way to add in some interval training at the same time. So if you've never done this method of training, I would suggest that you give it a shot. Because as with anything in regard to training, you know, it is an experiment of one. And you really need to try some things out to see if it works for you and, uh, and then find your way forward. And Keiko asks, when does Red Rock OTR? That is out. It is out and available. I've posted that. I can't believe, Kiko, you haven't seen it. Um, I will uh, send it out again so you guys can download it. it. It's available only for download right now. It's not on DVD, um, but I will send you the link. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. It's, it's you know, not our best work, but it's a really good workout. It's about 50 minutes long, and I think you'll enjoy it. So I'll send that out to you. Um, yeah, and Mark, if you have any other questions about that, let me know because you know I know a lot of people ask, how do you incorporate this program into your overall training program? And again, I think the key part is to have this really intensive period of cycling, even if you're a triathlete, and you still run and swim two or three days a week, maybe more if your time allows, but you really focus more on the bike, and I think you'll find some significant gains all the way around. Um, and then Dallin said there's been a lot of interest in nutrition strategy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think there's a lot of content, a lot of um, webinar uh, content we can up, uh, address over time. And I think, Alan, what we'll do is we'll ask everybody on the website 
I'm sorry, on the Facebook page what they're interested in, and we'll start getting some guests to um, also present with me who are really experts in these specific areas. So great idea. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have anything? Uh, yeah, Keiko. Um, yep, we have a lot of really strong nutritionists at Lifetime. We call them nutrition coaches, and they're all registered dietitians. Um, in fact, we have a really good one on our coaching staff. Her name is Laura Ryan out of Syosset, New York, and uh, maybe we'll invite her on a call, and she can talk a little bit about sports nutrition. And Oh, thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. Yeah. Buffalo, I can't imagine being in Buffalo. I had to move out of Maryland because I couldn't stand the winters there. I can't imagine being in Buffalo. But um, I think you need a fat bike, you know, and that way you could ride your fat bike up there in the snow and then do your some of your uh, indoor cycling workouts in addition to riding your fat bike. I have one down here in Tucson for the soft sand. I absolutely love it. So much fun. All right, everybody. Well, thanks again. I appreciate it. I'm going to put this up on uh, our, our YouTube channel and post it to the Facebook page. So if you know anybody who might want to look over it, please let them know. Thanks again for being part of this webinar series, and I will let you know when our next one's coming up, probably in about two weeks. So um, you all have a great holiday season. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.